So this is Amon Ra, one of the biggest culprits that's been quoted. His quotes have made it into the Bible so many times. We're going to go over him, some of his stuff. This guy here was pure evil, pure unadulterated evil. Every time you say amen, you're giving thanks to this guy. This is the guy that ordered amen to be a statement. Of course, it used to be Amun, but over time it became amen. But he said, when you give thanks for anything, you, you say my name at the end. You're giving thanks to this guy, the most brutal ruler of all time. And then you call it on the name of Jesus, which has no power whatsoever. Jesus means hail, hail Zeus. Okay, that's what it actually means. The guy's name is really Yeshua, which translates into jo uh, Joseph. It's not even close to this Asus because the J was recently added within the last hundred years. The J was just added to the name. It was Asus, and that uh, Isus, and that means Hail Zeus. Has nothing to do with calling on the Creator of the universe. That's why when people call on the name of Jesus, nothing happens. What the? Let's talk about the dark web. I've heard about it, I know about it. How do you get on it? Okay, so the dark web itself isn't a marketplace. Once you're connected to the dark web, you still need to know where to go to visit these horrible websites. You know, imagine a very long string of letters and numbers and the website instead of .com, it'd be .onion. You can't visit those websites in a regular browser. You have to do that while you're connected to the Onion router, which you can download at the TOR's website. And then you could go to a thing called like the Hidden Wiki, and the Hidden Wiki will show you all different categories of these websites. There's marketplace there's horrible things on there like you said for kids even like for hire there's counterfeit money there's fake IDs there are all, all kinds of different websites that do horrible things what is the onion router so the onion router is created to uh, anonymize your traffic on the internet and it decentralizes your internet traffic it keeps you anonymous beyond a VPN there were several arcs of the covenant one of them was located inside the great pyramid inside the king's chamber there's a stone rose granite box in the king's chamber that are the exact same dimensions in cubits as the Ark of the Covenant. It was it was added later because the pyramid had lost its ability to generate the full power. So they put the Ark in that rose granite box to add the extra technological piece so it could continue to pr produce electricity. So this thing was very important. That's the main reason why Moses was chased when he fled Egypt, he went and took the Ark of the Covenant out of the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. And the Pharaoh was like, damn, I let you go. And now you took our power source? We need that back. And so they chased him down. He didn't cross the Red Sea. That's another one of those remixes. Mm -hmm. He crossed the Sea of Reeds when you go look at the Aramaic version, a much closer and smaller sea. And then if you look at, look at the tectonic plates on USGS and all the other uh, gov sites that show you all the tectonic plate movement, you can do a geological rewind in that region and you discover around that same time period that the biblical text is talking about this story, there was a, um, a, a, plate, a tectonic plate slippage which would have caused uh, a tsunami. And when you have a tsunami, it sucks all the water out and you can walk across dry land and it brings it crashing back, just like it says in the biblical text. So it probably was a tsunami. Nobody's standing there with magic powers. Yo, what's up? Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Junk DNA. It's not junk, guys. It's unplugged DNA. Why did they unplug it? Because our cousins, unlike you've been taught, were way smarter than us. I'm not talking technologically smarter. I'm talking about spiritually smarter. More in tune with nature, more in tune with the universe, more in tune with the planet itself, the Schumann resonant frequency of the earth. They had bigger brains, proven, because we found the skulls all over the planet. They had uh, probably, because of bigger brains, most likely had bigger pineal glands, which is your spiritual antenna. All humans right now, we have billions of magnetite crystals in our brains. We don't even use them. They probably had access to their magnetite crystals, which is what turtles use to navigate the oceans to come back to where they're going to lay their eggs. And birds, they flock to the south and the winter and so forth, all using the magnetic field. Well, we have the same capability, but right now we've been disconnected from using that. If a tsunami comes inland, before it even hits, all the wild animals run to the mountains and the hills. You never see wild animals getting swept away by a tsunami. We've been disconnected. You know, our DNA has been disconnected. Our consciousness has been reduced. They've already scientifically proven and found out that a worship gene was embedded into the human genome. And they don't know who did it, but they can tell you that it was around 200,000 years ago, the same time that they discovered that chromosome number two in the human body was taken out, fused together, and two telomere caps were put on each end. Again, this is something done in a laboratory, admitted by mainstream scientists, but they can't figure out who did it. They can only tell you when. We've been nerfed. We've been dumbed down. 
I, mean, I think that's why it's so hard for everyone to reach their full potential and actually kind of impossible for people to read the, reach their full potential mentally, spiritually, whatever. Like we, there's a cap on us, right? Could have been the Anunnaki. Maybe when they uh, created us, spliced us be- with their DNA and humanoid ancestors' DNA, that they just left some stuff out. Or maybe the actual tinkering that took place is, was to actually just dumb us down, right? Keep us beneath them. <laughs> I know in the Bible it says basically we'd be like above the angels, right? So let's say the Anunnaki were fallen angels, right? That were jealous of us. And they did these experiments, these biological changes on us and dumbed us down. So we were no longer above them. And we were maybe like level the playing field or even make us, you know, beneath what the capabilities were. The North Star proves that the earth is flat and not moving. And I'm going to tell you how it's actually biblical. First, I'm going to show you a clip of the stars all circling around Polaris. Polaris does not move ever. If we're truly spinning at 66,600 miles per hour while also circling around the sun, while also our entire galaxy is apparently like getting thrown through space at all times, why does Polaris never ever move? Every other star moves except Polaris. Many biblical theories think that Polaris is actually God's throne room and I'm about to blow your mind. But this is artwork of what we think God's throne room looks like. Pay attention to the green here and it says in scripture that his throne room was like emerald crystal. Now let's watch a video of Polaris through a telescope. We're nowhere near done yet. There is so much more. When you look up, where does the word Polaris come from? The root word means heavenly. And remember all throughout history, we had sailors and just people in general following the North Star for guidance. You always know to find the North Star and it's the brightest star in the sky. So let's go back to the throne room for a second. If the throne room is the North Star, which I personally do believe it is, I want you to notice these colors and the North Star sits directly over the North Pole. Does anyone remember the natural phenomena that occurs around the North Pole? This blew my mind. Look at the colors of the Northern Lights, the throne room, and then Polaris. They're all the exact same colors. We used to have these Georgia guide stones and in one of the stones was this little channel. And basically it was directly over the North Star and you could look through it at any point and it just was always there because the North Star doesn't move. That's all that this did. In July, 2022, someone randomly did this to the Georgia Guidestones. The very following year, our besties started pushing this narrative that the Earth's North Pole is shifting away from the North Star. As NASA was started by Freemasons of the 33rd degree, and currently it's full of those same people. So what, like what, why would they be studying this? They somehow from Earth can figure out that the North Pole is tipping away from the North Star that's 33 trillion light years away. This is them trying to subconsciously program us to turn away from God, in my opinion. But wait, there's more. Here we have a very old flat earth map, and this is what they thought the North Pole was. In Genesis, they talk about the Garden of Eden being where there was four rivers. Basically, they describe to a T what this mass of like land is, saying that this is Eden. If I am correct, and God's throne room is Polaris, Polaris sits directly above the North Pole, where it very closely matches the description of the Garden of Eden. And it makes perfect sense to me that the Garden of Eden would be directly under his throne room. Here's where it gets even funkier. So right in the middle is this landmass. Does anyone want to take a wild guess at what it's called? Black Rock. Does the name Black Rock sound familiar to anybody? I don't think anybody's ever been to the North Pole. The only thing we know it for is for Santa and his elves living up there. So not only is this a fictional magic character, but does anybody know the dark history of St. Nicholas? How about St. Nicholas and Krampus? Or the fact that they do exactly what the elites do to children. And we know that Freemason's goal is to distort and do the opposite of everything that God does. So they placed a magical children herder up where I personally believe God is in the garden of celebrities and elite people like Cat Williams and I believe Kevin Hart said it at one point say that the North Pole is like lush greenery and tons of like forests and flowers and things like that. One might say, well, why would they lie? Why would they tell us that there was snow up there if there's not? The entire thing with Flat Earth, the reason that they would lie to us is because they're working to cover up the things that obviously make the Bible true. They hide things like this from us and then name massive evil mega corporations after them to laugh in our face and mock us. It, it makes, I, I, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, why not? Some of that makes sense to me. Some of it, 
not so much. Let me know what you think about that, though. That's that's a lot in that video. <laughs> There's a lot going on in that video. What's the end goal here? Because the U.S. government cannot possibly believe that this is sustainable. My dear, they know it's not sustainable. All of this is on purpose. The government is intentionally destroying our ability to self-sustain. And the reason I know that is this isn't the first time this has happened in history. This is the goal of any liberal government. Their goal is to make the citizens of this country as dependent on the government as possible. You know what happens when the citizens of a country can self-sustain? They don't let the government do what they want. The more the American people are able to succeed without the help of the government, the less power the government has. Like, this shit is not by accident. But do you know right now that the Fed is intentionally keeping rates high? And they are doing that to make things more expensive. They are literally keeping the rates high so people can't afford shit. And they're claiming they're trying to do it to control inflation. But it's not working. But they're continuing to do it anyway. You have to understand that the Democrats don't want the American people to be able to take care of themselves. Like, all you have to do is look at any policy our government has passed while under Democrat control. It's always social programs. It's always programs to give money to people or to give resources to people. And the cost of all these programs is always deferred for decades after so that people can enjoy the short-term benefits of a program we can't actually afford, get addicted to those benefits, become reliant on those benefits, and then 10 years from now, when those Democrats are no longer in power, they get to blame Republicans for not funding those programs, even though they knew when they created the program that it was unaffordable down the line. You can see this in every Democrat-controlled state. Like, you can see it in California, in New York, in New Jersey. They create tons of unsustainable programs that give short-term things to the citizens and they leave the consequences of that to be dealt with by people who are elected 10 years later all with the goal of making people as reliant on a government as possible did you ever wonder why the groups that are given the most aid in this country are the least successful like think about that for a second i mean it's kind of hard to argue with that i mean i moved out of chicago for a lot of those same reasons i moved down here to florida I've never been, I'm not super into politics. I was uh, pretty liberal growing up. I'm definitely more conservative now that I'm older and have a better understanding of how things work and how deception works and just how untrustworthy the government is. But uh, I am still like to think I'm somewhere in the middle, but that still doesn't make me overlook what's right in front of my face, right? Clearly, the people in power are trying to keep us down. I don't have 100% faith in anyone on the left or anyone on the right. But lately, the right is definitely more my speed, at least in terms of what it seems they're trying to accomplish. All countries in the world have collectively agreed that no one nation can own Antarctica, governed by the Antarctic Treaty of 1959, declaring it a land of peace and scientific research, never been broken even during times of war, which makes people think they may be hiding something down there. Iron rich waters are sporadically released from the Taylor Glacier, which looks like blood, but it's actually just the high iron content reacting with the oxygen, which turns it red. On numerous occasions throughout the 40s, 50s, even up until the 90s and recently, military expeditions have reported to have seen unknown flying objects in the sky. Silver, smooth, usually disc-shaped crafts that move in sporadic patterns. Similar descriptions to the UAPs that have been declassified lately, so I don't know, maybe this is where the aliens are at. Multiple videos and satellite views of several caves appearing to go deep within the icy surface of the South Pole, claimed to be the entrances to the Hollow Earth and the Kingdom of Agartha, as explained in Admiral Richard Byrd's diary among many, many other similar accounts. Pyramid-shaped mountains found everywhere that are completely natural and totally not an indicator of an advanced civilization that may have existed thousands of years ago. More mountains, this time in the shape of an alien looking face, kind of similar to the face monument on Mars we saw decades ago that was later covered up as a case of pareidolia. The human tendency to see faces in everyday objects, which it very well might be, but like damn, does this look like something more to me? Several mysteriously named areas around Antarctica, like Rothschild Island or Rockefeller Plateau, said to just be named after the famous billionaires, but theories surrounding them suggest these to be meeting places for the rich and powerful, where they discuss their evil plans far from anyone else. Some suggesting that it may even be the distant cousin of a certain other disgraced island where horrible acts were performed. 
strange deep blue shards of ice rumored to have been studied by top secret research teams at McMurdo Station. Said to be extremely cold, close to absolute zero, very light, slightly flexible, and doesn't melt but just continuously shrinks until it disappears. Many stories claim it to be pieces of what is infamously known as the ice wall, or part of the dome that covers our planet in the uh, pancake earth theory. <laughs> This guy, Carl Robert Dish, was a scientist stationed in a research base down there who stepped out and mysteriously vanished on May 8th, 1965. No one knows what happened to him, but the strangest part of this story is that his last known footprints led out into the middle of the Antarctic wasteland for some reason and then abruptly stopped with no trace of his body anywhere. Almost like he was somehow lifted up into the sky. bottom of the iceberg right here. Antarctica is actually home to a race of demigod beings who control and created us. Extraterrestrial entities that came from the sky, the ancient Sumerians referred to as the Anunnaki, and we typically see depicted with wings in ancient cave art and carvings. Top-ranking world officials and elites meet and work with them in ultra-secure, top, top, secret, classified bases beneath the ice, which a few ex-Navy officers actually did blow the whistle on, where they control and manipulate all global events, deciding what happens next on the world stage. Station in Antarctica Antarctica to be as far away from the rest of us as possible and continue manipulating the fate of the world from the shadows. You know, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about Antarctica. Not that I don't think there's any crazy nefarious shit going on over there. It totally is. But I just don't know. Like, there's so much. <laughs> there's so much going on up there, right? And we know, like, nothing about it. We, we know very little. So all we can do is speculate based on, you know, leaks and whistleblowers and a very small amount of images and, and videos that may or may not be from that region. There's definitely some crazy nefarious stuff going on up there. The fact that, the fact that, <laughs> my voice just did that. The fact that the entire world is in on it together. Like we can fight, you know, wars together. We can try to wipe each other off the face of the planet. But when it comes to Antarctica, like we are still just very strict on like, okay, this is a sacred area. Like, there has to be a reason for that. And it can't be because, like, of our good intentions or our morality, right? Or the better the better parts of our rationality telling us, you know, not to do it. Because if that was the case, we would stop fighting each other in general. So the fact that maybe there's a controlling race or controlling population there kind of safeguarding that area makes a lot of sense to me. Like, there's something there. That's that's kind of keeping us in line because we we're running crazy. We're wiling out everywhere else in the world, right? So <laughs> that's the, it's the only thing I could think of. It's like somebody like watching us. Like, nope, <laughs> not up here, bro. What if I told you the ocean was the real outer space? A couple years ago, an independent researcher named Tyler Schmerkenheiser designed and engineered a one of one submarine with an adaptive hyperalloy composite hull to prove it. Guy was obsessed, believed the concept of the ocean floor itself was a lie. Stuck a camera on the front of the submarine and set off into the unexplored depths of the Mariana Trench and Buddy, the species he'd captured. On these videos were things that have yet to be explained to this day. But instead of finding the seafloor, he discovered what he described as an abyssal vortex, a swirling black whirlpool that no previous expedition had ever encountered. Said that by the time he'd gotten through it, he rose up to lands that he'd never seen before in his life. Saw these strange human-like beings standing up on the shore. Was like this upside down world, accessible through vortex canals in the depths of the water. All right, that does it, I'm scared. The ocean is the most terrifying thing not just on the planet, but just in general. I think I'm more afraid of the ocean than I am outer space. 100%. And space is terrifying. It's like a big ocean. Not saying that it's water. That's a completely different theory. I'm not saying that outer space is water. But I'm just saying, like, water is terrifying. Space is, like, a bigger version of that. But the ocean is here. I'm not a strong swimmer. If, if I can't see the ocean floor when I'm in the water, immediately panicking. Panic mode. And I live in Florida. So that, that should tell you something about where my <laughs> where my brain is at not making the best decisions here but terrifying